Good morning and Happy New Year. So how many of you stayed up for the New Year's celebration? I see lots of hands. See, you know, my wife and I, we, we did stay up for the New Year's celebration. I have to admit, I was really tired. We, we stayed over at Vanessa's, and you know, the energy that these kids have running around all over the place. Man, I wish I had that kind of energy. At about 10 o'clock, I'm not gonna lie, I was getting a little tired. I said, Amber, uh, I might wanna go to bed. She's like, no, no, let's, let's wait for the new year. And that's exactly what we did. And you know, even though no matter how tired I was, I, I've always enjoyed having the chance to stay up and, and, and watch the TV and, and see these celebrations around the world as we enter in from the 2016 year or the old year into the new year. And I'll have to admit, you know, I, I cannot believe how fast this year has gone by. How many of you felt that this year just went by like that? It went by so quickly. I mean, I started working full time in February and now I'm like, whoa, we're, we're in January again. I've almost been there for an entire year. Man, that's crazy. And of course, the, the crazy thing about time, though, is that time doesn't go any faster, nor does it go any slower, although it may seem like it. It doesn't. The amount of time that we have in a year, it, it remains the same year after year after year. But the older we get, our perception of time, you know, it changes. Well, I do want to say it's amazing that we are here in this place, the beginning of 2017. And this, and last year, as it came to a close, we saw a lot of changes. A lot of things that were happening in our personal lives, a lot of changes happening in Fullerton, a lot of changes happening around the world and, and in our nation. Now, I'm sure all of you know the numbers of things that have happened, but let's talk about our own area. In this area, in Temple Baptist Church, we just finished with an election of a new pastor. We are entering into a new marriage, a new covenant between Temple Baptist Church and Branches Church. We are set to merge, and we're set to start a new chapter for the, our two churches, for our two congregations. The new pastor, Pastor Israel Gomez, yes, he was elected, and he is bringing forth his own church. He's bringing his own congregation, his church plant. And that church plant is going to have a home here with us. Now, in this new marriage, in this new covenant, there will be, there will be changes. There will be a lot of changes that will have an impact on our lives, but also have an impact in the surrounding communities, we will have the opportunity and the chance to have such an impact on people's lives. We will have the potential to have a greater impact when we work together. To me, this is incredible. This is absolutely exciting because we will have the opportunity to see new life here in this place, of course. But we will also have the opportunity to see lives changed, lives transformed. We'll be able to see people make that decision to say, I want to follow Jesus. We will be able to reach out in a way I can't even imagine. But with that unknown, there is excitement in that. Now, with the changes here and now, we must work together with our brothers and sisters in Christ. And I pray that we will all be able to work together and allow the Holy Spirit to fill our minds and to fill our hearts with love and with encouragement. We should be encouraged by this change, and we should pray for one another. And we should pray 
that our minds and our hearts, they don't go cold, that we don't grow bitter or angry at one another, but we should allow the change with open minds, open arms, and open hearts. This last year has gone by, it seems very quickly, as we saw our old pastor retire from his work here at Temple. As we closed the year up, many of us, we began to worry. And we became anxious of a new pastor. And many of us felt that time was going by so quickly. But then for others of us, it's almost as though time slowed down. And we were worrying, oh, what's going to happen? We were so anxious for change. Now, this transition is one that we will be going through together. And we need to truly rely upon the Lord during this time and upon his grace. Our faith needs to be in him. And we shall see this exciting new venture come together. What we have been doing here at Temple Baptist Church for the past five, the past 10, 20, 60 years, it's been a true testament, a demonstration of the work that the Lord has done through us and the work that the Lord has done in our lives. Our lives have been impacted and we've been able to do great things together for one another, for our missionaries, local and overseas. We have been able to have an impact in our surrounding communities as well. The work here, it has been very fruitful. It's been meaningful and altogether wonderful. And I'm sure we can all agree we have seen the Lord's work been done. Now, not only has there been changes here within the church, but there's also been changes within our country. Last year, we concluded an election with what seemed to be two polar opposites of political candidates. And now that the election is over, Donald Trump is set to be the new president of the United States. And we must pray as Christians that he and his administration, that they will make good decisions for this country, but also decisions that will glorify the Lord. We must pray that all of our leaders, whether if it's the mayor, the senator, members of the House of Representatives, that they will show loving kindness to one another. We must pray also that our leaders, our president, will be willing to work with others and help create positive changes for this nation. 2017 is going to be a year of change, and it's going to be a year of transition for our church, in our own lives, and in this nation. And with so much change on the horizon, I would like to encourage each of and every one of you to follow in the ways that the Lord has set for us. With change, yes, it comes uncertainty, but with uncertainty comes the opportunity to rely on the Lord and to put our trust in Him and in Him alone. We must be on a path of exaltation. Our lives are but a breath, and if we do not thank Him, we will lose that opportunity to be in communion with Him. So I'd like to take this time to read from Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verses 1 through 8, as this passage is one of my personal, it's one of my personal favorites. I honestly felt that this passage was very appropriate. I mean, we're having so much change that happened from last year, and it will go into this new year. We're entering a new season. With this change, yes, we're entering a new time period in our history, in the history of the church, 
history of our nation, and even the history of our lives, potentially the lives of others. So let's go to the verse. This talks about a time for everything. And it says here, I'm reading from the English Standard Version. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. Now one of the most interesting things about the set of verses is the word season. You ever thought about that? What does that mean? Now, if you go into many, the American Standard Version, the English Standard Version, the New International Version, they use the word season. Now, that's an interesting choice of words. However, in the, in the New American Standard Version, they use the translation, there is an appointed time. So that made me think, well, what is... Where does this word come from? So it comes from the, the translation of the word zaman, ziman. I, I don't know exactly how to pronounce that, but it means literally an appointed time, a set time as an indefinite unit. So season is actually a good translation of that word. You know, we have the four seasons, right? We have fall, we have Winter, we have spring and summer, and those are at a set amount of time. So I thought, huh, for, there is a season for everything. There is a set amount of time for that. Now, many of you have heard these particular verses in that old classic song by the birds. As they sung their song, Turn, 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 back in 1965. Now, the interesting thing about that song is they actually take Ecclesiastes, with the exception, I think, of two, verse, two or three verses straight from Scripture. But the crazy thing about that song, it was by a secular band. How crazy is that? A secular band is writing this classic piece from Ecclesiastes. I just thought, that's crazy. <laughs> and I think... Yeah, it is very interesting how every season is considered to be an appointed time. And by reading this, we have to accept that in every aspect of life, there will be a time, there will be a place, and there will be a season for everything. So the question comes up then, why are seasons such a scary thing? Well, it's very simple. That appointed time, it doesn't always go in sync with our timing. And we don't always know how long that appointed time will be. I'm not talking about fall or winter, but even sometimes it seems like here in California, we don't really have winter. We have, well, sometimes we do. We have winter and summer and something in between. But it's a little bit different than if you live in New York. You live in Massachusetts. You live in Canada or Alaska. Every climate's different. But we also have seasons in life. Some seasons are short, and some are very long. You see, we go about our lives, and we want things to remain the same. We, want, we don't want things to change. I don't know about you guys, but I don't like change. I like, things, I like putting things into order. 
I like things going very smoothly under my control. But that's not how the way life works. There are different seasons, there's different times for things. We have to realize that sometimes we go through a transition so that something great can happen. It may be that the next season and the next transition of your life will lead to something great that God has in store for you. God redirects our paths, no matter what the circumstance is. In fact, the psalmist reminds us that we are never alone in these seasons. If you want to write down in your notes, Psalm 73 Verses 23 through 24, it says, Nevertheless, I am continually with you. You have taken hold of my right hand. With your counsel, you will guide me, and afterward receive me to glory. We can rest assured that the path that we will be traveling is one that is laid out and guided by our Father in heaven. Ecclesiastes talks about the seasons or the times in which things are to occur. When we go through life, we do not remain in one season forever. We go from being a child to being a tween. We go to be a teenager, and we go to be a young adult. Then we grow up, and then we grow old. We go from elementary school, we go to middle school, to high school, to college, sometimes to the military, sometimes to higher education, sometimes to the workforce. In the same way, the life of our church, the course of this nation, it, went, it is going through stages. It has gone through different seasons. And as we approach and begin this new season, let us become more open to the new season for our church, for our new president, and for what is to come. Now, I want you guys all to think about the tangible, the material, the things that we own, the things that we buy. If you were to go to the market, marketplace, you would find all sorts of goods and products, food, maybe an iPod, car, all sorts of things that you can buy. The only issue that we have to face with our stuff is even that's not permanent. Things break. They get viruses. They become obsolete. They decay. They decompose. And with this in mind, we have to think about the concept of time. It is good to conclude that everything in life has a season to it. It is important to keep in mind that God is the controller of time. God has given each and every single one of us a certain amount of time that we will live here on this earth. It is God who is the ruler of time. In fact, Psalm 90, verse 4, if you guys want to write that down, Psalm 90, verse 4, says that a thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by or like a watch in the night. And that same verse, it reappears in 2 Peter, if you want to write that down. 2 Peter, chapter 3, verse 8, and it states that but do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years is like a day. That's interesting. I can't wrap my mind around that, can you? A day being like a thousand years. I, 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 I think of a day as 24 hours. I don't think of it like a thousand years. Although some days when I'm at the doctor's office, maybe. But the reality is, God is the master of time. He is the creator of time, and he, as he put the universe and all of us, all of the planets, all of creation, the heavens and the earth, into motion. And how incredible is it to know that we are given life. We're given that set amount of time here on this earth. Now, there are some people that say, well, this planet's horrible. I, I'm here on this earth for a set amount of time, and there's all this sin, there's this crime, there's terrible things going on. Yes, that's very true. There are a lot of terrible things that go on this, in this world. And that's because this world 
is full of imperfection. It's full of sin. We live in an imperfect world. We are all imperfect. We all are sinners. We all do bad things. Man is mortal. Man's not, he cannot live forever here on the earth unless he chooses to say yes to the Lord and is granted access into heaven. But here on the earth, man is mortal. Man is limited. Man is lost without God. If you do not choose Christ, are you going to heaven? No. You'll go somewhere else. It's a place called hell. And for some reason, a lot of people don't like talking about that. You have a decision to make. You pick heaven, you pick life, or you pick death, you pick hell. And with the time that we are given, we live every single day with opportunities and choices and decisions to make. And since the scripture says that there is a time and a season for things in our human existence, there is a choice that we must make with the time that we are given here on earth. What is that choice? It's the choice of whether to follow Christ and to say yes to him as Lord and Savior or to do it our way. Do it the way saying, no, I don't need you, God. And each and every one of us have to make that decision. So, with that in mind, there are three things that we must do in every season of life. And the first point, you can write it down in your notes, is that we must seek God in times of transition. All things on the earth are temporary, and as Ecclesiastes says, there is a time and a season for everything. Knowing this, the Bible tells us that we need to seek God first. In fact, write this in your notes. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. It's a famous verse. It's a verse that says, some of you know it, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So we must seek God. That's the first point. The second point on your notes, we must trust God, even when we do not understand. When we seek God through those seasons or transitionary times, we need to put our trust in the Lord. And I'm sure many of you have heard this famous passage before. But what does the scripture say? The scripture says, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 7. Many of you know this. We are to trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. So think about this. We must seek the Lord and we must put trust in the Lord. Now, trusting in the Lord and not leaning our own understanding, that can be a challenge at times. Because we live in a culture, we live in a world where we strive to understand everything. And that's not the case when it comes to the Lord. When transitions happen in life, we don't always understand why it's happening. We might question, why is this happening? I, I don't understand. I, I don't understand. Yeah, exactly. You don't understand. And that is why you must trust in the Lord. He understands. He knows what's going on. And then on the third point, we must thank God when we enter into a new season we must glorify the Lord in the midst of transitions. He was, he is, and will ever be. Now there's two verses here. You can write them down. 
In Colossians chapter 3, verse 17, it says, And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord, giving thanks, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So it's talking about giving thanks. Be thankful that the Lord's in control. Be thankful that you have the Lord in your life. And although we don't understand what's going on, we still must thank him. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 through 18, that verse says, Rejoice always and pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. It does not say give thanks in some circumstances. Give thanks in circumstances I feel like. No. It says give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So three things here. We must seek God. We must trust God, and we must thank God. Transitions in life, yeah, they are not easy. The only one who remains immune and can give everlasting life is God. Although we may not know exactly what change or transition or what a new season looks like or how the season's going to come around, We need to, as the Bible says, you can write this down, Matthew chapter 6, verse 34, another famous passage. It says, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. And each day has trouble, has enough trouble of its own. And that's a hard thing that goes back to the trusting in the Lord. Right? Don't lean on our own understanding. Because we can worry all day about what tomorrow is going to bring. We can worry all day about a month from now. Sometimes I personally feel like it's it's an incredible challenge for me because I like to plan. I like to know what's going to happen next year and the following year and the year after that and the year after that. Have a four-year plan and say, okay, God, this is what I'd like to do. And more often than not, that doesn't happen. God says, you're funny. I I have this in store. And, and that's, I mean, that's the reality. We want to have order of our lives, but that's not always what's going to happen. If we trust in the Lord, he will lead us down the correct path. He will make our path straight. Yes, we will go through different seasons as well. But God will be there. He will be there for you in trials, in tribulations, in your triumphs, in your successes. He will be there. And as we just read in Ecclesiastes, in all of those times, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to gather stones, a time to live, the Lord will be there. And how wonderful is that to know that we believe in a God that is always there. He's not going to say, eh, no, you're going through a hard time. I'm going to be over here. No. No, he doesn't do that. He will always be there. The journey of transition, it requires trust and obedience in the Lord. And God will provide the strength to endure all seasons, even trials, yes, even those tribulations and all of those changes in life. So you must ask yourself the question, have you put your faith in Jesus Christ have you sought after him have you said a prayer asking Jesus to come into your heart and transform your life it's a very easy thing to do and it will put you into a new season it will put you on a path to heaven if you haven't done so then I highly suggest that you begin that relationship with the Lord Jesus. Begin that relationship with him today. All it takes, all it takes is a simple prayer. 
It can be as simple as saying, Jesus, save me. Or I need you in my life, Jesus. And since we are given a certain amount of time here on this earth, we all need to know that time is limited. And because time is limited, I encourage you to enter in that relationship. We're talking about a time of salvation, a time of transformation, and a time for life. Let us pray. Let's try that again. <laughs> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are the God of time. To you, time is, an is another part of your amazing creation of the heavens and the earth. Lord, I want to pray for those who do not know you and those who haven't chosen you yet. Let your word, let the word of God inspire not only the people here, but the people in the community and the people around the world. Help us to understand that to everything, yes, everything, there is a season. And those seasons are all within your timing, Lord. Help us to seek you, Lord, because we are lost without you. Help us to trust in you, even when we are limited in our understanding. And help us to thank you in every single aspect of our life, wherever we may be. Lord, we thank you so much for giving us the opportunity and the amount of time to live here on this earth to say yes to you, Lord. And that is what we want. We want to be close to you, Lord. We want to say yes to you, Lord. We want to be a beacon of hope. A beacon of hope for the community. Lord, let this transition come, Lord. Let us build godly relationships Fill this place up with the Holy Spirit. Fill this church up with new people. Let us be an impact to new believers, Lord. Lord, we ask all of these things in your name, Lord. In your name, we pray. Amen. Please stand. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may live with one voice to glorify the Lord and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. And we all say, Amen.